Um, well, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year to you too, you and the family. Um, yeah, look, it, it's been uh, it's been crazy since the, everything's just started. Um, I, I think the answer to your question is that we won't really know exactly what we have until after training. You know, we have boys returning, but how they feel is, I, I don't know. You know, um, we need to, some of the boys have only been training for two days. And we haven't had a lot of preparation. So, look, we're going a bit unknown. Um, we have to adapt, we know that. So, um, I, I can't actually give you a definite answer until, you know, tomorrow and see how they feel, you know, after training today. Without asking you to name any names, do you still have any boys that are still isolating and still unable to rejoin training? Uh, we have two young boys. Um, we get... Uh, two back today, um, so like it, it, it's just been to be honest, it's just been crazy. So, look, I, I think the main thing is that the health of the player is most important, um, and you know because it's so unknown, uh, you know we'll judge off the reaction of our medical staff and the player after training and see how they feel. Do you have enough players available for Wednesday that you can field? a starting 11 of players that haven't had to isolate and have been able to continue training throughout the last couple of weeks? No, we, we've, had, we've, we've only had maybe five that haven't had COVID. So the rest have had COVID. So it's, again, it's been, a, it's been a difficult time for us. But look, we have players that are available you know, for selection. Um, how they feel after, again, today, I don't know what the bench will be tomorrow. I, I don't know what the starting 11 will be. I, I don't know. Um, so, um, yeah, your guess at the moment is probably as good as mine. It sounds like you've had quite the time over. I mean, have the coaching staff been affected as well? Uh, no, uh, we've been we've been okay, um, but we've had a, a large number of cases with, with our players, um, especially over the, you know, the, the after the victory game. Um, yeah, it, it just it just spread a bit here, but look. We'll see again you know, what we have to pick from. It, it sounds like, is this one of the most challenging things you've ever had to tackle as a coach, PK, this, these past couple of weeks? It sounds like it is. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I think like my first year in coaching, I had injuries and red cards, and now we have a, a virus. You know, I, I know it's the, the, you know, the current world at the moment, but... It's difficult as well, you know, with us in, in the A-League because, you know, our squads aren't like Europe of 40 or 50. You know, we only have a squad of 23. So it's uh, very difficult um, in these current climate. But, you know, what do we do? You know, we just keep going and, you know, make sure that the player's health is most important. And if, and if players are okay to play, they play. If they're not, you know, well, you know, we, we, can't, do much, we can't do much about that. I mean, a squad of 23 and only five of them don't get it. That sounds mm. incredibly difficult. But with that in mind, what are the expectations for Wednesday's game? Is it just more of an opportunity to get some minutes in the legs ahead yeah. of uh, MacArthur on the weekend? How are you approaching that? Yeah, look, we approach it like every other game. You know, the expectation is, you know, it, it could be an opportunity for, for players to come in and, you know, to get a chance. Um, but like, like normal, you know, we sort of, uh, you know, we go with every game, you know, trying to do what we want to do and, you know, and what we need to do and follow our processes and, and who starts, it's irrelevant, you know, what the main thing is that we have healthy players and people that come in and that are hungry to play. What's the mindset amongst the boys as they're coming back? Is there a sense of... They're desperate to get back into it and keep going. Is there a trepidation about how they'll be feeling? What What have you noticed at training? No, the the, the players have, have been hungry. Obviously, you know, to get back training to start with. Um, obviously, you know, being at home for seven to ten days, it's you know, without moving, I'm sure it's a, a difficult time. Um, but look, they've shown uh, been great since they've come in to train. Um, they're hungry. How they end up or how they feel. 
uh, after football, I, I don't know. Um, after 90 minute game, it's completely different, you know. That's why we have to manage it, you know, day by day. Probably let somebody else have a go and <laughs> anybody. Thanks, Joey. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Paddy. Um, can you say can you say with 100 percent certainty whether the match will happen tomorrow night? Oh, I, I, I don't know unless you know um, we come down with five cases and and uh, Wellington come down with cases like. You know, this time, you know, a week or maybe two weeks ago, we were, we were preparing for the game and then all of, all of a sudden, you know, everyone got hit with cases. So uh, in that answer, I, I don't know. You know, I just hope everyone is safe and no, no one gets affected. Has it changed your perspective on the outbreak or whether playing football games at the moment or having crowds is a good idea? Look, I, I'm not the government, you know. All I need to worry is about is the, our team. Um, and how they're feeling, you know, what happens after the, what happens in that space, it, it's, you know, it's not my decision. You know, my decision is to keep the players safe, um, train them as hard as I can, and when called upon, you know, play our strongest, uh, you know, at, at 11 on the park. I had a lot of questions about how Nick's might have troubled you last season and all the rest of it, but it feels a bit irrelevant now. <laughs> look, look, I, I, look, in the day, you know, I think, uh, you know, every team you come against, uh, uh, they're difficult. You know, there's no sort of such thing as an easy game. So, you know, um, at the moment we need to worry about, you know, where we are and, you know, how we go about, you know, preparing for tomorrow. Thanks, mate. Thank you. PK, I should also just quickly ask, since we had last spoken, the club has... Uh, sold Nathaniel Atkinson to um, Hearts in Scotland, the league you're very familiar with. How did that? How quickly did that move come about? And how do you think he'll go? Um, I think that was sort of that sort of move developed over some time. Um, obviously, you know, I, I played there. That was my first club, and um, a lot of good memories there. You know, I actually played with the manager, uh, Robbie Wilson. So we played in the same team for a couple of years. Look, uh, time will tell how he will go, um, you know, but it's, it's not an easy league. There's no such thing as an easy game, you know, conditions are difficult. So, you know, I think it'd be a good test for Nathaniel to see what, you know, European football is like. There's been a number of Aussie, young Aussies moving on to Scotland at the moment. He's joining Cam Devlin at Hearts. Do you think here in Australia we don't, respect the footballing education players can get in Scotland compared to elsewhere in Europe? Uh, I think maybe, you know, us as a nation, we look, we think, you know, Scotland and we only think of Celtic and Rangers. Um, but it, it, it's not like that, you know. Uh, you know, Scotland, I think, is a great platform. It's a great first step. Um, Hart is, a, again, with Cam Devlin and um, Nathaniel, Hart is a good little team, you know, they've played in Europe. Um, so, First of all, if you go overseas, I think it's an, it's an accomplishment in itself because it's very hard for an Australian to move over. So, um, you know, like, it's one of those things that people have their own opinion, you know. Everyone thinks maybe the pinnacle is Man City or Barcelona, that every kid's going to go there, which in reality is not. Um, so I think it's a good stepping stone for players to start with an international career, um, especially abroad. Um, good morning, Paddy. Good morning. Um, Obviously, Atkinson has just made the move, as Joey said, but they came after he sort of was sitting on the bench a lot to start the season. Did that play any part in his move? I don't know. We, in the day, you know, Nathaniel's contractor, so, you know, we decide if Nathaniel goes or stays. Um, it's, in the day, you know, we want to sort of produce players for this club to give him a chance, and that's what it was at the start. Nathaniel was injured, um, hence why he didn't play at the start. Um, but look, uh, we put him back in when we thought it was necessary, and you know uh, through his hard work, he you know he played for us, and obviously you know he's fulfilled a dream of many kids. So hopefully it's a, a first of many steps, and it's great for us that we're able to you know produce players here um, and make them follow their dream overseas because that's you know part of the the journey and the process at this club. Um, you got a number of other young stars at the moment, including Kolakovsky and Metcalf. Could you foresee them also getting moves in maybe Asia or Europe in the near future? I, I don't know. In the day, that's up to them in the way they perform. 
Um, we have some talent. I don't know if they're stars. Uh, they're, they're talented kids. Um, but, you know, they need to work and work hard to, you know, to get, try and get a move out, uh, you know, fulfill their dream. Um, and that's why, you know, I, I'm sort of really um, honest and say they need to work hard to, you know, to produce and to train and to play as best as they can because you never know who's watching at any time. Um, but it doesn't get easier as you leave Australia. It gets harder as you, to go into Europe. So, um, you know, I, I'm sure they have aspirations of going overseas. Um, and hopefully one day they can, you know, fulfill them.